Breaking tonight, Westminster's toughest talking MP, our very own Lee Anderson, has been appointed deputy chairman of the Conservative Party. It's a hugely deserved promotion, and while he's rightly rather truffed, the announcement has sent the left and the craven MSM into meltdown today. The Guardian's Pippa Carrera branded Lee a red wall Rottweiler, and what I assume she thinks is an insult. It's not, uh, by the way. While snaring Labour MP Zara Sultana said his appointment was scraping the barrel. Well, here he is. Lee Anderson, congratulations. Uh, you're annoying all of the right people today, aren't you? Well, uh, uh, hello, Dan. I see I'm uh, the tolerant left are out in force again, saying nice things about me. But look, hey, I've always said, whilst I've been in this industry, that 50% of the population won't like my views and my political stance on stuff. And if, you know, if I, I am living inside their heads rent-free and, and they're coming taken to Twitter and social media to say horrible things about me, then that's up to them. But, you know, really, the people in this country, they want people to speak their mind. And I always say that I, I always try and say the things that most people are thinking. And I think I do that on a regular basis. My constituents certainly tell me that. And if people like Zara Sultana want to have a go at me, I think really they should be looking over the shoulder at their shrinking majority at the next election. You know, I'm going to be OK, I think. You know, because like I say, Dan, I, I get out there amongst my own people and say what they're thinking. And, and the left and, and the Guardian and, and the Daily Mirror, whoever wants to have a pop at me, Come and have a pop at me. I've got broad shoulders. I can take that flag. Now, Lee, you were here in the studio on Wednesday night and you said, look, you'd love the job, but there was zero chance you were going to be offered it. So can you explain what happened? Uh, have you spoken to Rishi Sunak? How did you get this job? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's just come out of the blue this morning. Obviously, I'm out of the country at the moment on parliamentary business. Uh, and I got a, uh, a message to say that the chief whip needs to speak to you. So I spoke to him and he says, we want you to be the, uh, the deputy chairman of the party. And I said, well, why? Uh, and basically it was, we like what you've got to say. We like the way you get your message across uh, and you speak to people. And I think, you know what? I took about half a second to make my mind up. I said, yes, of course I will. I owe the Conservative Party a massive debt, personally, that, you know, they took me when I was politically homeless uh, and gave me the chance to, to represent my own constituency. And then obviously a few moments later, I got a text off Rishi to, to wish me all the best. Well, I'm incredibly proud, uh, Dan, of uh, you know the job I do. I'm, I'm really lucky. Uh, I mean, I pinch myself every single morning when I wake up. And I pinch myself when I walk into Parliament every day to, to do a job I love doing. And to be given this as well, which is, you know, it's gone down really well with the membership. I've had messages, emails, you know, text messages from all over the country wishing me the very best. Look, the left are going to attack me. They're going to be looking for stuff. Yeah, over the next few days to, to have a pop at me. So what? I'm not really interested. The only thing I am interested in is this great country of ours and making sure that we win the next general election. And how are you going to do that, Lee? Because you have conceded yourself that the Conservative Party is in dire straits at the moment. You are very, talk. very yeah. concerned about uh, the invasion uh, across the channels. Yeah. So what's your prescription? Because... You're in a position of power now, Lee. How do you stop what could be, or what's looking like it could be, a historic defeat at the next general election? Well, yeah, well, yeah. I think uh, we've been marched up the hill many, many times on the small boats, uh, small boats crisis. Dan, I've said that before. That's the number one priority. You know, certainly in the Red Wall, getting immigration down, sorting inflation out, all these things. Look, you know, I, I am I'm batting now from a position of strength. I can get out there, talk to the membership, you know, get people ready for the next yeah, it's something I do on a regular basis anyway. I go out and meet the membership. I was in Thornton last week. I was in Halifax the week before. And it's getting people interested. You know, a normal grassroots tour is not just necessarily members. They are interested in, you know, what I've got to say. And I get this all the time. You know that, Dan. By being on your show each Wednesday, I get really good feedback. I feel like, you know, I am a voice for, for a lot of people out there. And obviously the Tory party think that as well, or they wouldn't have given this brilliant opportunity. But it's always played for. Uh, the next election is, you know, the Labour Party will hate this appointment. <laughs> I've been inside their camp. Uh, I know what they think. I know what they say. Uh, they will hate this with a passion. Believe me, they'll be crawling out of the woodwork over the next week or two. Look. And like I say, that's fair enough. Come and have a go. Uh, but you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking about my children. I'm thinking about my family. I'm thinking about my friends. I'm thinking about this country. 
Uh, and, and you know, if Labour get, get into number ten, it's it's going to be a terrible, terrible time. I remember what it was like in the seventies when the when the unions were in the country. That's what the union paymasters are looking for in eighteen months. Because if the Labour do get in, we've got big problems. So this is a great chance for me to help, uh, you know, to help our party and help government get on the right track and get that message across and let's say to people, look, yes, we've had a tough time, but we're trying our best and we will get it right in the end. Well, look, you, you know I don't hold back, uh, Lee, when it comes to, to Rishi Sunak, and I don't think he gets everything right, but this was a good appointment. This was a good appointment uh, from Rishi today. I believe you speak for the people, you speak for the Red Wall, and you've got one hell of a job on your hands. Uh, you're going to have to keep us posted, though, Lee, because uh, we want to see how your progress goes. Listen, you know, you've given me a great platform, Dan. I don't want to forget my friends at GB News, ever. Uh, like I say, you've, you've given me a good platform. You let me get my message across. You know, challenge me, you know, when we're having difficult times. That's fair. That's what good That's what good broadcasters do. But, yeah, Rishi's made a, a brave decision, right, judging by my inbox and the membership. Mm. I, I'm hoping it's the right decision. You know, we're a broad church in the Conservative Party. Uh, you know, like I say, the membership, uh, on the whole, uh, are behind this appointment and uh, I've got a big debt to pay back now and uh, you can guarantee that I'm going to do my best to pay back the Conservative Indeed. government and, and Richard Tunay. Well, look, Lee Anderson, good luck, Deputy Chair of the Conservative Party, but of course uh, we will still be speaking to you on a regular basis here on Dan Wharton tonight. Lee, yeah. congratulations. Thank you so much.